Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video I'm going to discuss some recent data that have come from a human trial whereby they had participants take niacin for 4 to 10 months to see if it could help treat patients with mitochondrial myopathy. So I'll discuss what all of those different terms mean and discuss their data. And so this data was recently published in the cell metabolism paper that came out just the other day and is titled Niacin cures systemic NAD plus deficiency and improves muscle performance in adult onset mitochondrial myopathy. So before I go into the results that they saw and some of the side effects of the study, I'll just explain what some of these terms mean. So firstly, let's talk about niacin because I've never spoken about it on this channel in any detail before. So niacin is also referred to as vitamin B3 or nicotinic acid, and it can be found on lots of different food types such as meat, fish, legumes and seeds. Or niacin can be taken as supplements. So niacin is best known as being a precursor to NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and I've spoken about the metabolism of NAD plus before in this channel and the, how complicated it is, but this time we're just going to focus on the roots of niacin into NAD plus. So the current mechanism linking niacin to NAD plus formation is the Pre's handler pathway. Sorry if I said that wrong. And it's named after the founders of the pathway and it involves firstly niacin conversion into nicotinic acid mononucleotides and then into nicotinic acid dinucleotide and then NAD+. And so why do we care so much about NAD+, well it's one of the most abundant molecules in the body and is a really important cofactor for two major functions, one of which is acting as a redox coenzyme and the other is acting as a substrate for NAD requiring enzymes. So in this clinical trial they were using niacin to see if it had an impact on alleviating the symptoms of mitochondrial myopathy, so why did they focus on a mitochondrial disease? Well, the mitochondria is an organelle in a cell that performs aerobic respiration and is actually a key regulator of the NAD plus to the reduced form of NAD plus NADH ratio. So the mitochondrial disease that they focused on was mitochondrial myopathy. And so this disease is characterized by a progressive weakness of eye muscles, but also in general you see decline in we see muscle weakness and fatigability. And the major cause of this disease seen in adults is due to the accumulation of mutations in the DNA that's found in the mitochondria. Yes, that's right, you don't only have DNA in the nucleus. And so these mutations are often deletions. And so the push towards the human clinical trials here is due to the positive benefits they've already seen in mouse studies. So by increasing the NAD plus levels in mouse models of mitochondrial myopathy, they saw an improvement in the mitochondrial dysfunction and increased uh, muscle strength. And so in this study, they wanted to see what would happen if they treated uh, human patients with niacin to try and increase the NAD plus levels. And so the setup of this clinical trial was between four and 10 months for the patients and the controls and they increased the dose throughout the time as I've written out here. And so for the patients they did it for 10 months and the controls only for 4 months. And the patients, there was 5 of them, there was 1 male and 4 females aged between 17 and 70. And for the controls they were age and sex matched and they were healthy. So the first thing they needed to check was whether or not having niacin actually increased the NAD plus levels because that was the main uh, rationale behind their methods. So firstly they looked at the NAD plus levels in the muscle tissue and for this they took some biopsy samples. And so in the patients at 4 months and 10 months they saw an increase in the muscle NAD plus levels, a 1.3 fold and a 2.3 fold increase. And by 10 months this actually matched the healthy controls, which they didn't see an increase throughout the study, even by taking niacin. So besides looking at the muscle NAD plus levels, they also looked at the blood NAD plus levels and they saw an increase in both the controls and the patients this time with a 7.1 fold increase by four months in the patients and a 5.7 fold increase in the controls. And so 
Obviously, this proved that niacin worked at increasing the NAD plus levels, but the other question of the study is whether or not it actually helps with the symptoms of mitochondrial myopathy. But I think it's a key thing to point out here that this was from looking at the blood's NAD plus levels, and this is potentially good as a diagnostic because the NAD plus levels were lower in the mitochondrial myopathy patients than the controls to begin with in the study. So it could be a good diagnostic for people with the condition, and it's a good way to track the effects of niacin throughout the study. So, so far they've proved that niacin is a powerful NAD plus booster in humans, both in healthy controls and patients, but does it help with the symptoms? So to do this, one of the things they looked at is whether or not they could restore muscle strength. So one thing I haven't actually mentioned yet, which might just be of interest, is why you do see a decrease in muscle strength when you have these mutations in the mitochondria, and that's mainly because the muscle is such an energetic tissue, and so it's vulnerable to defects in the mitochondrial metabolism. Anyway, back to the results. So they saw increase in some of the muscles, such as the abdominal muscle, the back muscle, shoulder muscles, and knee, although these were two varying effects, but um, unfortunately, they didn't see an improvement in the ocular muscles, which they think is due to the fact that this is one of the first muscles to become defective during mitochondrial myopathy. So what did they see in the healthy controls? Well, they also saw some slight increase in shoulder strength and knee extension, despite the fact that the NAD plus levels in the muscle didn't actually increase. So what other effects did they see? So interestingly, they saw a decrease in the patient's hepatic and visceral fat, otherwise referred to as the unhealthy fat. And they think that this could be due to the fact that from the improvement in the mitochondrial performance, they see increased oxidative phosphorylation, which is aerobic respiration, which could explain the increased metabolism and use of the fat. There wasn't a corresponding reduction in this unhealthy fat in the controls, although they did see a whole body reduction in the fat percentage. And in terms of the mitochondria itself in the patients, whilst they saw an improvement, they didn't actually see any changes in the structure of the mitochondria or any change in the deletion load. So besides these positive effects that they saw, there were also some side effects reported and one of which is the reduction in haemoglobin, which I'll come back to in just a minute. So side effects seen in all of the patients included hot flushes and a tingling, tingling, I can't even say it, tingling sensation of extremities when they were taking more than 500 milligrams per day of niacin. But as I said, they also saw a reduction in haemoglobin, which is the oxygen carrying compound that's found in red blood cells that delivers oxygen around your body. And they also saw a decrease in the red blood cell number. So this is important to consider for the longevity of these studies. And they also saw um, gastrointestinal irritation such that two controls actually dropped out. And then other side effects reported included skin drying and flatulence. Lovely. <laughs> so what can we actually take away from these results so far? Well, this study very much shows that niacin is effective at increasing the NAD plus levels and the benefits that they saw with the mitochondrial myopathy patients is thought to be by a metabolic bypass because they see these improvements in the metabolic functions without seeing improvements in the DNA deletion loads of the mitochondrial DNA. But the problem is, this is only there was only five patients. They need to do it in a larger trial size and also try and see what the optimal dose is to try and minimise these side effects. But I think overall, this has been a pretty exciting study so far. And obviously, it's been done in patients. And if you go into the clinical trial website, which I'll link in the description, you can see more detail about the different measurements that they took. So hopefully, this was useful. And as always, thanks for listening.